Hillary Clinton is in New Hampshire today. She addressed a big ticket item on the presidential campaign agenda, tackling crippling college debt. Clinton followed Senator Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley in unveiling her specific plan. Her campaign released this ad earlier today. I believe our success isn't measured by how much the wealthiest Americans have, but by how many young people go to college without drowning in debt. I want to make college affordable. Higher education should be a right, not a privilege for those who can afford it. Clinton chose this town hall meeting in New Hampshire to unveil the plan since it is the state with the highest average student debt in the country. Her plan is to reduce the cost of four-year public schools, make two-year community colleges tuition-free, and cut student loan interest rates. Student debt in the United States has topped $1 trillion. Clinton's, the, Clinton's proposal centers on a $200 billion federal incentive system aimed at encouraging states to expand their investments in higher education and cut student costs. The plan is estimated to cost $350 billion over 10 years. I'm joined now by Adam Green, co-founder of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Uh, uh, thanks so much, uh, Brother Green, for coming here with us. Uh, give us more details about what Hillary Clinton is laying out when it comes to this plan. It seems pretty elaborate and specific, but give us some of the internal details there. So this has been a much anticipated speech. Mm -hmm. And we've been saying for months, the devil will be, will be in the details. Right. Well, the details are in, the details are big, the details are great. Right. And the bottom line is that millions of Americans will now have access to debt-free college, who otherwise wouldn't have if right. this passes into law. Right. Uh, basically, it gives a lot of aid to the states to allow them to bring down the cost of tuition at public universities. It gives more aid, uh, mostly to low-income and middle-class people through Pell Grants to assist with non-tuition costs like room and board and stuff like that. And again, the net effect is that millions of people who otherwise might not go to college or, or would leave college saddled with tens of thousands of dollars in debt can now graduate debt-free, and that is phenomenal. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah, I wish you'd have come along a little earlier when I was in school. Uh, yeah. So Bernie Sanders released his own plan in May that would eliminate tuition and fees for public universities. The $70 billion annual proposal would be funded by imposing a tax on transactions by hedge funds uh, uh, sure, something Wall Street loved. Investment <laughs> houses and other Wall Street firms. Does Clinton's plan hold up in comparison in terms of a source of revenue? Uh, yeah, they, they both tax the rich and corporations, and that's, that's a great way to pay for it. Mm -hmm. One thing that was really notable today was Hillary Clinton actually credited progressive activists with making debt-free college a centerpiece of the national agenda. And what's beautiful about Hillary Clinton, Martin O'Malley, Bernie Sanders all coming out with bold plans is that we really have a race to the top. Right? We have fundamentally shifted the national debate from 2014 where barely anybody was seriously talking about student debt issues. If they were, they were talking about tinkering with interest rates to now having a race to figure out how can we really make college debt-free for millions of students, right? And what that means is, you know, the next Google, Google co-founder can graduate college and not have to sideline their dreams to take an office job and try to pay down their debt. Right. You know, somebody who wants to buy a house can graduate and buy a house, get married, start a life, right? People's life decisions don't have to be really impacted and, and saddled because yeah. that's fantastic. It's big, it's bold. And one thing of note, this is the biggest investment that she has proposed so far. So this is not lip service. This is a real commitment to making college debt free. Right. So she holds, uh, that is Hillary Clinton, uh, about a six point lead over Bernie Sanders in New Hampshire. You think her college debt plan will help keep her the lead there? Because uh, obviously, if you're reducing the debt f uh, of hundreds of millions of dollars for, uh, for citizens, that's got to be pretty attractive. It is attractive. You know, the Progressive Change Institute, our sister organization, did a poll in January. What it found, this is likely voters, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. By 71% to 19%, voters want debt-free college. Wow. Yeah. And among many issues that were polled, the number one most motivational issue to Democrats who didn't show up in 2014, that made them say that it would have showed up if someone had campaigned on it, was debt-free college. So again, I think if Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton are in a healthy competition to see who can be bolder on debt-free college. That's a win-win for everybody, including them. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad at all. So Clinton also took a minute to comment on the latest controversy, controversy about Donald Trump saying what some perceive as an assault on women. Take a listen to this certainly think that uh, it deserves the kind of uh, reaction that it's getting from so many others. But I think if we focus on that, we're making a mistake. 
what a lot of the men on that stage and that debate said was offensive. The Republicans are putting forth some very radical and offensive positions when it comes uh, to women's lives, women's reproductive health, women's employment, women's opportunities. So I, I think we'll let the Republicans you know, go back and forth with each other. But I want to point out there's really not that much difference in the policies that they are uh, proposing when it comes to American women. We got a couple seconds. What's your reaction to that? Absolutely. I mean, that Republican riddled with misogyny. And I, honestly, silence speaks volumes sometimes. And other people's failure to call him out, Donald Trump, for the things he was saying, well, it says something about where they are. So she's right. Uh, it's, it's bad news over on the Republican side. And it's it's great that Democrats are actually providing positive alternatives. All right, Brother Green, always good to have you on. Thank you so much. Coming up.